Welcome to our talk on co-constructed cosine gestures, or COCOS for short, engaging language learners in unpacking and internalising lexical and grammatical meanings. This talk is by Christopher Day, Michael Jarrett, Rhonda Angel Corey Radley, Jasmine Seymour. I'm Denise Angelo from the Australian National University, speaking to you from Ngunnawal country in Canberra, and my colleague is Susan Perch from the University of Sydney in Sydney, where the dialogue language is being rekindled. We think of ourselves as the COCOS Collective because we're all educators who have been connected through the Masters of Indigenous Languages Education Program at the University of Sydney and through our love of languages teaching. We've all, in our different ways, been inspired to use co-constructed and co-signed gestures to assist with teaching different languages. We see COCOS as a strength-based approach because they build on Indigenous learners' cultural traditions of signing, body talk and gestures. The idea of co-construction is that learners and teachers can engage together in creating a gesture that represents the meaning of a word or affix. This activity expands learners' understanding of the item. Then, as learners say or hear these items, they simultaneously produce the gesture. This kinesthetic mode reinforces meaningful associations with each item and enhances learners' recall, and it's really fun. Each presenter will now take you through their work with COCOs. Yura, that's Hello and Jandai, one of my two traditional languages. My name is Chris Day, and my people are the Nugi of Konamuka, specifically Mogumpin. Jandai, the language of the Nunakulan Gombal of Manjaraba, has been greatly impacted by settlement on Konamuka country, with my ancestors being prohibited to speak and teach their language. There is, however, certain and growing enthusiasm within the community to bring Jandai back to daily life. In my current work role, I work with schools and communities to implement language programs so that all students are afforded the opportunity to learn the language of the land on which they live and study. In 2017, I enrolled in and completed the MILE course with the hope to further assist our community's effort to reawaken the language so that all Kwanamuka people could learn and use it. I was interested in finding a way to expedite second language acquisition and reflecting on ways I have learnt things quickly and retained them, such as using physical mnemonic devices, I explored whether or not using co-constructed cosine gestures benefited students' second language acquisition of an Australian Aboriginal language. Through the research work of Zimmer, Halstrop and Engelkamp 2000, Goldberg 2006, Macedonia and Nosh 2011 and more recently Porter 2016, the use of co-speech gesture as a pedagogical device has been demonstrated as an effective tool in assisting learners to acquire mastery of an established international second language. No published research could be found to support co-speech gestures as an advantageous strategy for enhancing second language acquisition in an endangered Australian Aboriginal language context where remnants of the language exist in a state of being revitalised. To find if using co-constructed gestures assists in learning an Australian Aboriginal language that is incomplete, I taught a 15-hour introductory Jandai course to two classes of Year 5 students, one class using speaking, listening and reading only, and the second class also employing gestures. A storybook was developed for students to learn vocabulary items and simple language structures, including the asking and answering of questions. The story followed the journey of two brothers traversing Kwanamuka country in their search for whoever stole the oysters from the rock. The journey allowed the brothers to travel to different significant places to ask different animals if they had stolen the oysters. Who stole the oysters from the rock? An example. Who stole the oysters from the rock? Nyandu, Kenyan Gadda. Jen, Madhu, Jen, Kajolga, Ni. Did Kabul, the snake, take the oysters? An example. Did the snake steal the oysters? Kajolga, Ni, Kabul, Kenyan Gara, Jen. It was found gestures did assist in recall and retention. Using co-constructed gesture was easier and more successful for recalling prepositions such as to, from and on. 
It was equally as easy for verbs such as steal, take and see, and for concrete nouns such as rock, oyster and snake. The plural suffix of jandai was represented with ease by simply repeating the gesture. Indicating past, present or future tense of a word was also quite easy with directional gestures. Proper nouns such as place names and third person pronouns such as they were not so easy to determine a suitable gesture. Further testing may confirm co-speech gesture as being of great benefit. This pedagogy enhanced students' engagement by increasing ownership and enjoyment, and I would certainly encourage others to use this fun pedagogy and to undertake and contribute to further research in this area. Thanks. Yuwei. Gini gengu jawin, nganyu di bijar, Michael. Ngayam kumbengir jam rupaga-paganyar. Daru ingu jilingi nyakegu. Hello everyone, my name is Michael. I'm a Kumbangir man from Nembaka Heads. Good to see you all. On the bottom left is my homeland, Nembaka Heads. That's where I grew up um, as a child. On the right bottom is Murubai Language Centre, which was established back in the late 1997. Out of the Murubai Language Centre come the third edition on the top left, the Kumbangir Language Dictionary. In the Murubai Language Centre, we produce these beautiful people up here. They are three Gumbangir students that took two years. The, the, without the elders foresight in watching their language disappear, no speakers, we would not be here at this point in time in history. The, the, uh, our language would have been slowly, slowly faded away. In my current role, I am the Aboriginal Language and Cultural Officer. I look after 30 schools and six preschools within the Gumbanga area. There are more, but at the moment we've got 10 teachers and educators that go into these schools to teach Gumbangir. My role is to train these educators and teachers in the language and in teaching techniques to uh, work on a scope and sequence, a units of work uh, for the Gumbanga language and mentor these students, uh, uh, educators, teachers, one-on-one -on -one, and also in a group. Learning and teaching Gumbangir through stories. We come up with an idea that to uh, teach to adults these stories we come up with three stories. One is called Nyaga Yangai, Look at the Shark, Guram Wanji, Poor Dog, and Waki, Ghost. Wrote the stories, we did the translation, and we put them into Murubai Language Center to linguists to check the, uh, the grammatical structure of the stories. We thought gestures would be a great way to learn and teach a language. Because if I just stay here like this, you haven't got no idea what, I, what I'm asking. If I do gestures, then you will understand because we use our facial expression, our body language, our tone of voice tells us, gives us a clue in what we want. So here are some of the gestures and a part of the story that um, the, the students, uh, uh, the educators come up with. Wow, Mumbi you like he said, Mumbi you the little ones, uh, Mughal being 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 uh, naughty, you know, Burala bang made a big noise, Murala in the house. So Mura is house, and this lady as well highlighted uh, the uh, things in yellow. It's called allative two. Because we want we want to we want to also describe you know uh, the uh, language and how the grammatical stuff works. This lady she says the children ran to the bed to the bed quickly. Watch her when she says to. Gulpi go to the bed. Quickly, this one is also the, the locative. So the other one was the allative two. This one is a locative in, in, in. Oh. 
So as you can see, the locative is there as well. So we had fun doing this teaching uh, and learning language through gestures. Weeaboo Nata Anjukuri Rhonda Radley. I'm a proud Guri woman with strong cultural and family ties to Birupai and Dungadi peoples. My role as a language activist, teacher, learner, Aboriginal elder and researcher privileges me in a position to support decolonisation through language revitalisation. Our tongue language, the language of the Birupai, Waramai and Garingai peoples, was one of 35 Aboriginal languages spoken in New South Wales pre-invasion colonisation. Over time, English became the prominent language and Aboriginal people were restricted from speaking their language, the language of their people, the language of their land. When speaking a language, it connects me to my mob, my land, my culture, my ancestors. The River View is my birthplace on Beeropai country, Guruk, Port Macquarie. The newspaper article features a group of Aboriginal adult language learners. In teaching this group, I become aware when introducing a new image and language word that I naturally use hand and body movements. I had observed over time that when I use gesture in teaching, the learners would automatically use the gesture associated with the image before saying the Gatung language word. We had all had lots of fun with this. Hand talk, matcha jewel, has been used by Aboriginal people with and without the spoken word to communicate and teach. Observing Uncle Michael Jarrett teaching Gumbangira language with gesture inspired me to want to support this method. Hence, my interest in the research area, matcha jewel, how using gesture in teaching Gatung helps preschool learn nominals. In the research, the iconic gesture, actions that constitute visual representation of speech using the experiment were developed by me for the study and or borrowed from other gesture systems, such as the Australian Aboriginal Gesture System and or Auslan, if the gesture was judged to be iconic. The learning material comprised of 10 nominals, two sets of five nominals. The pairing of two sets with and without gesture was counterbalanced across the two class groups. In this way, the children acted as their own controls in that each child was taught half the Gatung nominals with and half without gesture. The children enjoyed learning with gesture. This is an example of the teaching of the nominals with image and gesture. Going, going, going. Bakan, Bakan, Bakan. Gungang, Gungang, Gungang. The exper experimental results support the use of gesture in the learning of nominals in the retention condition, testing five days after the teaching. The reduction of variables required for a controlled experimental approach in a preschool classroom environment reduces the scope to embed Aboriginal pedagogies. For example, Aboriginal ways that include connection to land community and which gives the broader term of reference to engage with language learners. It is clear, however, that having demonstrated benefits from gesture use in the controlled context of this study, there's every reason to imagine that these results can be translated to richer educational approaches. The research findings will increase understanding of how gesture can play a role in the acquisition of second language and will inform the design and development of teaching methods and resources for the revised Gatung language. Ideally, I would teach on country using a multi-century learning approach and with hand talk. This connects the learner with the land, its story and the essence of the thing. Gesturing is a fun way to teach and learn. I do what I do for our language to be passed down to future generations. And I believe that hand talk, much our jewel, has a part to play in the continuation of our culture and language. Marumbu. Thank you. Ngaya Jasmine Burabarangu Darag Dalang. I am Jasmine from the Kangaroo people of the Sydney Basin area. 
I belong to the Durag Custodian Aboriginal Corporation out here in the Hawkesbury. My family belong to the Hawkesbury. We have lived here for hundreds of years. My family were here before the first fleet arrived. It is my great pleasure today to be part of the reawakening of language that is happening on Durag country. I am a primary school teacher and an artist and writer. Being part of the language awakening that is happening on Durag country is incredibly empowering. My language is the Durag language and together with the Durag Custodian Aboriginal Corporation and Durag Tribal, we are working towards bringing back our language and writing our dictionary. I'm also a primary school teacher um, in Western Sydney. Uh, last year, as part of the Masters of Indigenous Languages Education course that I did at Sydney Uni, I did a research project on how gesture would affect um, two stage two, year three and four kids uh, classes at my school. In the study that I did, it turned out that the acquisition of language was increased 10% by the kids who did gesture and their retention rates also was 15% um, better than those that did not receive gesture. Warami, the way that I taught gesture was to use um, some hand signals that I sort of developed by looking at Aboriginal hand speak, um, Auslan, the Australian hand sign language, and um, I also ended up co-creating a lot of it with my class because they were really interested in it and as we progressed they wanted to be part of making the gestures. I used gestures with little books that I would make to create stories and so um, one of the very first gestures that I started with was this one which was uh, Wabu where is Kirawi. Where is Kirawi? Wawu Kirawi. Dingaladi. Duraniwa. There she is in the white gum tree. And so we're using an interrogative with a location suffix on the end of um, Durani, white gum tree. I would really recommend using gesture to teach um, languages. Uh, this is the first experience I had of teaching language and um, you know the thing about gesture that really appealed to me was that aspect of of telling story with your hands. Um, you know I think gesture is a, a, a very powerful and effective way of uh, teaching language. I know the students at my school they really felt like it was um, you know about making story I think and I could see that those students that were receiving gesture week after week were getting it a lot quicker than the other group who were not getting it. And it was quite rapid and at times I actually struggled to keep up with them because they were getting it faster than I was with gesture. So yeah, uh, it's been a very positive experience and I encourage you to give it a go. Yanu. So, in conclusion, we'd like to emphasise that we see COCOs, our co-constructed, co-signed approach with gestures, that they build on cultural traditions of meaningful gestures and body language. Um, they represent, therefore, a cultural continuity, a strengths-based approach for Aboriginal language teachers and learners. They're applicable, as the presenters have shown, across all these different languages, and they're able to represent words as well as parts of words, the affixes of these highly inflecting languages. We have here a snippet of Chris from Jundai showing you an interrogative or question word and a common noun, a yummy shellfish. We have here Jasmine from Darug showing you a different question word and a gesture for a kind of bird. We have here Anjukuri showing you two different gestures for different kinds of animals um, from Gatang, um, a bird and a frog. And finally, we have Michael from Gombangi showing two different suffixes, uh, an allative to a little tag or a locative in or at. We therefore hope that we've shown you that these co-constructed co-signed or co-cos, these gestures support 
different age learner groups, teachers of all different levels of experience and confidence with their language, that they support meaning making. So they give so many clues and there's so much more to share about this, but we've only had four and a half minutes for each of the presenters, um, that they really reinforce memory and recall because there are multiple sensory pathways involved which assist with recalling each of the items. Language teaching and revitalizing, reawakening and reigniting contexts is supported. And of course, learner engagement enthusiasm because they're just such great fun and so motivational. So COCO's come highly recommended from us all. So we'd like to all thank you. And thank you very much for listening to our presentation.